I'd come up to Scotland for a canoe expedition in the far north of the Highlands with my friends, Ian, Kevin and Neil. But because of three large storms coming in from the Atlantic, we decided to scrap our original plan of paddling the exposed locks along the west coast for somewhere a little more sheltered. A glen tucked away right in the heart of the Highlands. Unlike the location we were initially planning to go to, this was our first time visiting this area, so we didn't really know what to expect. So our plan was kept simple, to journey as far into the glen as we could with enough time to leave before the storms arrived. This glen is a national nature reserve of native woodlands, glistening locks and great expanses of moorland and hill. Paddling on this lock is like taking a journey back in time. As you move through the glen, you can start to build an image in your head of what much of the Scottish Highlands may have looked like hundreds or even thousands of years before. One thing was immediately clear when we got out onto the water. It was definitely more sheltered here than where we were originally planning to paddle. With conditions like this, it was hard to believe that in just a matter of days, the country would be hit by some of the worst storms seen in decades. This lock was dammed in the mid 1900s, which meant that water levels weren't necessarily what was detailed on our maps. This explained the bog that was preventing us from reaching the peninsula where we intended to set up camp. So, we made a detour around it to look for a more accessible piece of land on the other side. This looked more like it. In a small clearing in the wood behind the beach, we found indicators of previous visitors who had spent the night here. So we unloaded our gear and made this our camp spot for the night. Whenever I'm on canoeing journeys like this, I always try to get up as early as possible. There is often a surreal atmosphere in the morning, a stillness and a clarity that is rare to find during other times of the day. Although sometimes, finding the motivation to get out of a warm sleeping bag and out into the cold to enjoy those moments can be really tough. But fortunately, on this trip, Ian likes a coffee first thing in the morning. As we packed our kit away, we gave the camp a good clean up to leave no trace and then loaded up the canoes to continue our journey further into the glen. The canoe as we know it today doesn't really have much history or heritage in the British Isles. There is plenty of evidence pointing towards dugout boats, rafts and coracles being used by our ancestors but nothing quite like the canoe. Regardless of its heritage, I think it's safe to say that the canoe seems right at home here. The 
The first time I ever paddled a canoe, I was only about five years old. At the time, it didn't really grab my attention. But now, there are a few activities I'd rather be doing. I'm not biased, but I honestly think that this is the best way to travel. But sometimes, on canoeing journeys, you find rapids that are not in your favour. With us arriving at the bottom end of the rapids, it would not be possible for us to paddle upstream. The portage distance to the next lock in the glen wasn't far by any means, but with two canoes, a bunch of camera gear and plenty of food and coffee to move, it was a distance we couldn't do in one trip. Nonetheless. Portaging is all a part of a canoeing adventure. As we moved our kit through the landscape, it was hard not to take in our surroundings. For thousands of years, the native Caledonian pine woods of Scotland were cut for timber and cleared for farmland, with only scattered remnants surviving across the highlands. The regeneration and conservation efforts here in this glen are allowing great swathes of the Scots pine to regrow, providing renewed habitats for wildlife. As the evening drew closer, rain and sleet showers started to move in on us and the last of the day's light began to fade away behind the Monroes. We opted to finish moving all of our kit to a spot just short of the next lock and call it a day. The following morning, there was a change in the air. The storms were getting very close, and already there was an uncertainty on the wind. Rather than portaging the kit to the next lock and ascending into the hills from there, we decided to leave the canoes and most of our equipment at our camp spot and head into the next stage of the glen on foot. As the sun climbed higher into the sky, its rays revealed the soft blankets of snow that covered the surrounding hills. Strong winds at altitude produced swells of snow dust that reached high above the peaks. We spent the afternoon climbing higher on the slopes of the Monroes, with every new summit revealing an even more beautiful view than the one previous. As the four of us are not all fortunate to live close to this part of the country, we often have to plan our trips and just hope for the best. Far too often have I come up here for a canoe journey or a long distance walk, only to spend days or even weeks on end in the pouring rain. Scotland is notorious for its rain, and there is certainly a charm and a magic about it that I love. But this was something special.
We could have stood here for hours, taking all of this in. But with the evening drawing nearer, and the weather deteriorating as the storms were now literally on our doorstep, it was sensible to return to the canoes and start formulating a plan to collect our vehicles and make the long drive home. On the journey home after getaways like this, I always find an opportunity for contemplation and reflection. There is a simplicity about these journeys that I crave so much. Paddling a canoe down a lock and deciding where to set up camp gives your mind a profound sense of freedom. I've been hiking, paddling and camping for most of my life. It's times like this in nature that I find myself nurturing, shaping and defining my identity. Despite the complications of changing the whole trip, before we'd even started it, adapting our plan and exploring somewhere entirely new to us was a far better reward, with some incredible memories made along the way.